Now we will start our presentation sessions uh, by inviting Tim Rudder onto the stage. Please jo join me welcoming Tim Rudder with a big round of applause. Hello, we are Tim Rudder. It's a great honor to take part of this contest. The title of our presentation is to improve IAQ on ship. We hope our presentation will give you a lot of interest in this topic. Thank you. Good morning, honorable judges, distinguished guests and delegates, and all other ladies and gentlemen. This is Tim Rotter here to introduce some proposals to deal with the issues of improving indoor air quality, namely IAQ on board. We will first explain the current situation of indoor air quality on board and then move on to the absence of solutions. And finally, our proposal is to make a specified regulation for IAQ on board. To begin, IAQ, the indoor air quality, refers to the air quality within and around ship buildings and structures. As technology advances, human rights and working environments are emerging issues worldwide. However, there is lack of regulations and laws on air quality on ships. Even in ISM, which is the International Safety Management Code, to provide an international standards for safety management and operation of ships, there are clause to ensure safety at sea and to provide safeguard at ships, but there's nothing about indoor air quality on ships. This is largely due to the fact that there is lack of interest in indoor air quality on board, and for this reason, we choose to improve the IAQ on board. First, let's see whether ships are really polluted. Although there are very little amount of research data, most of the invested ships had, had higher amount of air pollutants compared to the WHO's indoor air quality guideline. And especially for chemical ships, they were way over the guideline limit of air pollutants. The pollutants mostly detected in ship include carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, NOx, SOx, formaldehyde, TVOC, and particulate matter. Also, there are guidelines in MLC to provide, to improve crew air quality. In terms of air quality on board, there's, not, there's only regulations for temperature and relative humidity. Also in SOLAS, for the enhancement of maritime safety, there are regulations in Chapter 11-1, and at Regulation 7, it is stated that there should be a measuring instrument for the atmosphere of ship. However, the stipulated list of pollutants seems to be insufficient, and the specific criteria of the air pollute quality doesn't exist as well. Therefore, we will focus on the five parameters. PM, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, formaldehyde, and TVOC among the seven most frequently used parameters, excluding temperature and relative humidity due to them already have regulations in MLC guideline. PM is a first-class carcinogen and cause cardiovascular disease, respiratory disease, and lung cancer. Depending on the concentration of carbon monoxide, symptoms such as vision disorders, headaches, nausea, angina, can occur and brain function may decrease as well. Carbon dioxide can cause drowsiness, vomiting, and headaches when, it's, when it is beyond a certain level. Formaldehyde comes from adhesives and preservatives. It causes irritation of skin, respiratory failure, and increases the incidence of cancer. TVOC is a volatile organic compound and includes ethylvenzene, styrene, and tolerin. When it's when exposed to TVOC, people can experience the blurriness, nausea, muscle cramps, nervous breakdown, asthma, and leukemia. All of these substance, substances mentioned above have a huge impact on the human body. Both the dangers of harmful substances and the traits of ships also accelerate the occurrence of diseases among seafarers. Residence time on a ship is long, and even accommodation is carried out on board. 
In addition, ventilation is difficult and ships are sealed due to the structure of the hull. And when major disease occur, the immediate cure cannot be treated. Even though there are problems like these, there seems to be insufficient regulation on air quality on board. So we are going to make a specific regulation for indoor air quality on board. Nowadays, as the global economy develops, the number of crew members and the scale of shipping industry are now increasing and will continue to develop as income and quality of life improve. In this trend, IAQ of ships, which have exceptionally long residence time compared to the other forms of transportation, has a significant impact on health and, <coughs> health and comfort on passengers and seafarers. On land, regulations and about air pollution on indoor have been strengthening in buildings, subways, and factories. Accordingly, related studies are being conducted continuously. However, regulations and studies on ships are focused on improving structural safety, water tightness, and energy efficiency. Due to the ship's improved <coughs> characteristics of ships, and only regulations on pollutants that are emitted by ships are getting stronger, whereas there, there is little interest in indoor air quality in ships. Additionally, unlike other, <coughs> unlike other sicknesses, diseases caused by these pollutants often have mild symptoms until they become severe, and they are highly fatal. As a result, people on board are unaware of their physical condition and are not cautious, which makes their condition more serious. Serious diseases include COPD and cardiovascular disease. COPD is a disease that causes gradual shortness of breath, and it is common in old people with a history of smoking. However, if people are continuously exposed to fine dust and air pollution for a long time, even young people and non-smokers can get the disease. Typical symptoms include coughing, phlegm, shortness of breath, and chest pain. Because it progresses slowly, in the early stages of the disease, minor, <coughs> minor symptoms such as mild cough and shortness of breath can be regarded as insignificant. However, when the serious stage begins, severe cough, and decreased heart function occur. In addition, when respiratory infections such as pneumonia occur, symptoms often get worse suddenly. Complete recovery from this disease is nearly impossible, so once it develops, it worsens until they become fatal in old age. Next, cardiovascular disease is a disease that causes disorder in blood vessels that supply blood to the heart and brain, and it has a high mortality rate. The disorder it causes include high blood pressure, angina, myocardial infarction, arteriosclerosis, cerebrovascular and brain disease. Symptoms include shortness of breath, chest pain, dizziness, and heart palpitation, and it is difficult to diagnose. It is difficult to diagnose So people are often unaware that they, are, they have it before they have a medical checkup or until they, their symptoms suddenly cause their death. Finally, the biggest reason why there are no regulations in these areas is because conditions for supervision are not sufficient at sea. The first reason is because data transmission is difficult due to ships traveling a relatively long distance in open sea. Second, it is difficult for non-professional crew members on board to measure the pollution level accurately, which decreases the reliability of measured values. To solve these problems, we suggest specific measures. First, there is no IQ treaty 
in IMO regulation. So we strongly suggest establishing a treaty related to IAQ. As we said earlier, we will present specific figures for PM, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, formidate, and TVOC. The criteria we have determined are based on WHO's indoor air pollutant concent concentration regulations. And because carbon dioxide is not specified in WHO, we have set the criteria based on Taiwan, Korea, and Japan, which have strict standards among IMO member countries. First of all, we, we adapt PI 1.4 number of deficiencies per category of deficiency of the IMO strategic direction number one, improve implementation. Based on that, we change the measurement location and measurement material more specifically among the contents of regulation seven of SOLAS. We also strongly insist on following the criteria shown earlier. To meet this criteria, IMO needs to build a special system. We propose to install a measuring instrument that can automatically measure the aforementioned five pollutants on ships. With this device, the measurements can be stored as data collected when the ship is anchored at the port and automatically sent to the relevant instrument. When the system is built as above, it is advantageous in that the hassle of sailors having to walk around the ship to measure air quality disappears, as does a hazard of entering contaminated areas. In addition, if the data from the measuring instrument is automatically transferred to the relevant supervisory organization, it can prevent manipulation of the measurements. Also, we suggest inserting measuring instruments in accommodation and workspace to improve the health of people on board. This includes the bedroom, hallway, dining room, engine room, and serving room. And we recommend inserting instruments in additional spaces, such as seminar rooms, and kitchen room, conserving the density and length of stay. Finally, we urge the spread of information on the impact of PM, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, TBOC, and formidate on the human body globally, and the creation of an indoor air quality management protocol on ships, based on the awareness of these impacts. This may not only further increase the ship's IAQ, but it also improve the habitability of the crew's working space. Furthermore, all crew members to visually check the level of air pollution, which is difficult to measure with the naked eye, will make them more aware of their health. As a result, people can manage their health more effectively to emphasize, indoor air quality is now emerging as a serious problem, where research and reporting is now required. We believe that improving and regulating the IAQ on board is an important issue that should be addressed to improve the health of crew and passengers on ships. Thank you. Thank you, Tim Rudder, for your presentations on, on alerting us on the importance of alarming indoor air quality on board. Now, let me open the floor first to judges to accommodate their insightful comments and questions uh, brought during the presentations. Just, are there any questions and comments to our Tim Rudder? Yes, please. Uh, uh, thank you for your uh, presentation, it was quite fresh and bright new 
perspectives that you are taking to view, uh, to look at those issues of CTRS health and uh, welfare. And uh, well, I, I have a question. Uh, to implement the, implement the revised regulation as you propose, if it's possible or applied, is there any specific idea or plan to get the regulation into practice in reality in the part of the third countries because there are some countries and ship owners who just can't afford to install those in devices on board. So do you have any uh, idea or to provide those countries and ship owners any monetary instrument or fund to help them fully enforce the revised regulation in the part of the IMO or its member countries? Uh, thank you for your question, ma'am, but can you just wait for a moment to prepare the... Sure. Um, can I answer the question? Yeah. Uh, it is stated in ISM that the company should afford and they should uh, they should ensure there would be no There, there should be no uncomfortables in ship. But if there, the company cannot afford mm -hmm. the regulate the, to manage the air quality of ship, mm -hmm. I think we think mm -hmm. the IMO should give some help to the companies. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's, that's what I'm asking. Well, uh, there might be uh, some penalty or, uh, well, fine if they don't uh, oblige to the regulation. And, but uh, we have to look better way, I think, <laughs> for them to <laughs> abide by the rules and facilitate them to abide, abide to the rules. So in that uh, perspective, I kind of propose if you have any idea or, uh, well, plan or any suggestion uh, from in the part of the IMO and its member countries to provide any fund or monetary instrument to those countries or ships, honors. Uh, do you think it's feasible? Actually, we didn't think about the well, yeah. <laughs> I one see problem that for the ship owners because yeah. <laughs> we we had a um, some thoughts that ship owner must be. You know, well, uh, flags ships uh, go to other countries, to various countries. And well, and then if uh, if the regulation only applies to port state, then th that kind of doesn't work. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, Jules. Uh, if it is possible, would it be uh, possible to give another chance to for them to respond yeah. to this question by email yeah. or the yeah. written responses so then they can have a better ideas on this because yeah. for the wider application on these issues for the wider scope under the umbrella of IMO they need more yeah. ideas uh, generate they need time for generating more ideas so can I uh, open the floor on yes yes we uh, have cement the greatest cement place Uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, well, in fact, there are more accidents caused by toxic gas 
when working in the other areas than in the accommodation area, right? Cargo tank or on deck, something. Uh, well, is there any action against it? Thank you. In case of cargo tanks or chemical vessels which carry toxic materials, uh, we know that there is a there is already a regulation for uh, shutdown valves that can prevent toxic materials from spreading to accommodations. Yes, I already know that regulations on cargo on hazard uh, cargoes vessel. Uh, but how to record and how to send the result of the toxic gases percentage percentage to the port? Uh, we we stated in our presentation that the instrument that we we attach in our vessel it collects the data while the ship is in on board on sea and then it the collected data will go to the relevant committee when the vessel is on port because of some network issues Thank you. Uh, yes, there are another questions from Team Mastodolog. Yes, another uh, questions from our judge. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, your presentation is very unique, and you mentioned international international standard, um, including uh, SOLAS, ISM. Um, you declared. Uh, there is no exact clause, I agree. But they, among the international standard ISO uh, 45001 is a, the occupational health and safety. And as Professor Lee at first mentioned, from the ship owner's point of view, it, it is a big burden. They should pay the money. Uh, in our real world, um, in every time, a lot of times money talks. And my question is, um, is there any reported case of the early deaths of the seafarers or passengers uh, or any, any disease, disease uh, you researched, any reported case you found? Uh, thank you for your thoughtful question. Uh, as as we searched all year, uh, we we cannot find some some issues of the uh, examples of their. Uh, so we we thought there's there is little interest. So we should make some regulation. And. And, and there, are there are many examples of land, so we can apply them to ships. Are there any more comments from the judge? I would like to say to your presentation, uh, maybe it needed to the reference and the abductive evidence in need in this presentation. And so uh, I, I don't find to the case to the report of research report to the, the in general and newspaper or to the dissertation. Maybe maybe you are some more uh, detail to the in need to the evidence. I think so. And so your the idea is very unique. I so I think so. I agree. However, is maybe some more uh, the in need to the research and development relevant to the issues. 
to amendment to the, the IMO regulation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Judge. Thank you for making the perfect timing. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, thank you very much for the team rudder. Uh, why don't we make a big round of applause for the first team? <laughs> thank you. You may go back to your seat. Yes.